Oh, it is time for episode three of The Boat That Guy Built. This one deals with a good night's sleep, a bed. Hey, everyone needs a bed, especially if you're going to live on a boat. Exactly. Not everyone, but most normal people need a bed. And right. Those uh, who don't need it have terrible back problems. 100%. Because I was thinking, like, a hammock would suffice because that that I would eliminate the, the rocking of the boat, perhaps. But then then you wake up with basically scoliosis. Yeah. <laughs> no one is like, oh, thank God for that. Sleep in a hammock. No, it's not comfortable. No, hell no. Anyway, you ready? All right, do it, man. All right, three, two, one. This is Guy Martin, part-time world-famous motorcycle racer and full-time lorry mechanic. He's not looking pretty. Inspired by Britain's noble history of engineering, Guy and his best mate Maeve are scouring the country for the best inventions of the Industrial Revolution to fit out Reckless, their aptly named narrowboat. We should be proud of being British, and I think people need to know, don't they? They've already forged, thrown, flushed, and pumped their way through history. Give us out, kid, give us out. And this week, their mission is to make all they need for a good night's sleep on board Reckless. <sighs> Look at that. A mission that will take them right to the birthplace of British industry, the cotton mills. I think that's fantastic. Guys squeezing 200 years of British brilliance into one boat. The boat that Guy built. All right, let's go. A chilly morning in Derbyshire, and Guy has bravely spent the night on board Reckless. <laughs> I've had better nights of sleep. But it wasn't even the best. Truck driver sleeping bag and um, hard floor. No, we need to get sorted. We need it, yeah. If we're going to do a job, we need to do it right. We need bed. <laughs> <laughs> we need to sort the job out, don't we? Man, he doesn't seem like a guy that drinks, but. That's not, it, it makes it look like he uh, yeah. had a, a few too many pints last night. Yeah. Hey, man, as I get older, I realize a hangover is very possible without even drinking alcohol. You just have Damn. to sleep wrong. And it's the same thing as a hangover, man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. It's insane. So, yeah, a good night's sleep is essential. Yeah, I noticed that this weekend like i was only one real part of the weekend that i was drinking uh which was which was my gig in baltimore but then like i had a stopover in charlotte and um well not in charlotte um my house and then i just slept wrong um and then i for a couple hours just had a rest stop and yeah i felt worse afterwards like yeah. midday and then trekked on to atlanta didn't get any sleep there and did a weird gig, which I won't talk about on here, and then drove back for eight, nine hours, whatever it was. Oh, yeah. A, a, a good proper night's sleep is a really good thing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not envious right now. I, I feel everything that guy is feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I felt what I was feeling last weekend myself. Mm. <laughs> The engine room floor is clearly not the best place for a kip. Guy needs a bedroom. Sounds like a job for Maeve's carpentry skills. All right, Chief. Go on then. We need a bed. Uh, you having a sleepless night, Tim? It's not happening, Chief, is it? Hey, a man without a bed is a man hey. with no home. <laughs> well, I reckon if you lay down. Do there, you reckon we can make one? Yeah, of course. Can you make one? one? I'll make it for you, Chief. It'll be the best night's sleep you've ever had. Come on then. Let's have reckon? a measure up. How do, what do you mean measure, measure for a bed? We'll get you some laid down there, I'll scribble around here and we'll know where we're heading. You don't do that. <laughs> How tall are you? Five nine. Five, I reckon. Five nine. Five nine. Going to this with your boots on your six foot. Five nine? I thought it that that's my height. Yeah. Yeah. Mine too. So yeah. hey, there you go. I know There thing you go. Common. Uh short king season. Yes, yes. Although, uh, I'm not going to get into that. 
What sort of width are we going for? Are we making it for two people, boy? Could we get cosy? Well, both of us. Yeah, I yeah, think. we'll make it four foot so we keep each other warm. That's what the, I SA, think so. what the SAS do. It's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're ready for action then, are we? Yeah, okay. So I need to I'll make go. some sheets, or yeah. I need to make a mattress. What do you know about making mattresses? <laughs> <laughs> the thick end are not a lot, boss. Sleep is an important part of Guy's routine. It must be clear of conscience because the boy goes out like a light, it's unbelievable, but he snores like a Perkins diesel. Oh, shit. While Maeve starts the bed frame, Guy heads off to make some sheets, which, believe it or not, are one of the most important products Britain has ever produced. Really? Wow. In the 18th century, innovations in the cotton trade were just as important as blast furnaces and steam engines in making Britain a manufacturing superpower. And the quiet Derbyshire village of Cromford is where it all began, with a man called Richard Arkwright. What a boy. A very greedy man, though, by the sounds of it. Money drove him. That's what makes a good businessman, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. He ended up richest man in the country. Arkwright the entrepreneur invented a water-powered spinning machine and combined it with semi-skilled labour all under one roof. It'll be the perfect place for Guy to weave his sheets for Reckless the first ever factory. The constant flow of water into the Cromford factory meant Arkwright's machines could be powered 24 hours a day, and so the night shift was born. To see what an 18th century factory was like after hours, Guy will weave his sheets tonight. But first he... Well, they invented the graveyard shift. You bastards. <laughs> you bastards. <sighs> Ah. There was some good that came of it, but this, we will never forgive you for that. It's a night shift. Ah. Good God, man. Ah. Cause you're, More you're... power to anyone that works a night shift right now. Yeah. God, man. What I've worked nice. I've worked night shift in the past. It's uh, a completely different group of people. It's the people uh... that you don't put on day shift. They're walking yeah. HR violations. Yeah. Night shift ruins lives. I'm pretty positive. It's not sustainable. Night, night shift is not sustainable. Uh, it's especially not. not not a true night shift. Yeah. Like uh, uh, go to work at night, get out in the morning. Yeah. That is not sustainable. 10.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. I was an overnight cashier at a Harris Teeter, 24-hour grocery store. And, you know, I, I had my fun with it, but definitely the stock crew was the type you don't want on day shift. No. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. You could also uh, say that they're time travelers because you've lived yesterday, today, and tomorrow all in the same go round. The same go round, yep. Uh huh. All right. Sheets now. <laughs> Sheets. It's local guide Sally Mosley to see the revolutionary ways Arkwright attracted a workforce to the town. Fuck. This was the first planned industrial housing in the world. It's, it's his first lot of housing for his, for his workers. For his workers. Each cottage held a family and... Oh, yeah. You'd get a few folk in them houses. You would. And there size. was an incentive because I believe that if you had ten children, you got your rent free. <laughs> ten as children? As long as those ten children could work <laughs> in the mill. The first ever factory town didn't just have housing. Interesting. That's where the free labor came from. Yep. Have yep. have lot. That's that's almost like a farmer mentality. Yeah. That's like have enough kids to have all your farm hands. You know, and and okay, okay, ten kids working in the mill, your rent's free. Yeah, that was all before child labor laws. Yep. Arkwright also built a pub, a church, a school, and even allotments. The whole area is deemed so historically significant that even the pigsty is a listed building. It's as heavily protected as Chatsworth. Honestly. As a stately home. Fuck. Yeah. So, <laughs> and yet it's just it's a, a pigsty. A, it's a humble pigsty with grade <laughs> one listing. Well, it's, it's in better wrap than my bedroom. <laughs> And this was just supposed to give his workers a bit of independence. It so was. So they could earn, I suppose, extra, a few extra quid. It was to keep having them pigs, happy. Having... It was to keep them healthy. Everything yeah. he did, ultimately, was to protect his interests. Yeah. You didn't want an unhealthy workforce, yeah, did it's you? Money. It and if the sheets Guy weaves aren't up to scratch, 
maybe he'll end up in another of Arkwright's buildings. He actually built a jail. He had his own jail as well. He had his own jail. For the most minor offences, you could end up in jail. Whack. In 1787, Go on. Richard Arkwright was appointed High Sheriff of Derbyshire, which oh. meant that he <laughs> could be judge and jury oh, to and, miscreants. And the employer as well. He was employer, he oh, locked them up, he decided their fate. You don't want me to lock the door and leave no, you in no, there? No, I must get You're ready to come out? I must get out she happy she laughed. I'm hanging around. Wow. Can we, can't imagine what type of crime you'd have to commit in order to get thrown in there. Like, that's terrifying. When your boss is also the sheriff and the judge, that's... Talk about, oh, shit. <sighs> like, they're giving you so much. Like... Uh, all the, that garden area and like it's like you could check out any you can't even check out anytime you like or leave it's not eagles hotel mm -mm. california nope nope this is terrifying so he was basically building a utopia of his choice by force yeah for production's that's, sake for production's sake that's scary yeah that's really that's, scary. that's that's terrifying yeah yeah it's time for Guy's night shift to make his sheet at Mass and Mill. With machinery powered by the mighty River Derwent, this factory was Arkwright's most famous achievement. And as only the rich could afford alarm clocks, workers were summoned to their shift by the factory bell ringing out across the whole town. I best get cracking. If I don't get down there, she outpaced, someone else is going to have my job. So I've come to meet my mate Howard, and he's going to point me in the right direction. Now then, Howard. Hello, Guy. How How's you it doing? going, boss? You all right? Yeah, you? Good handshake. I like that. <laughs> I could learn a lot off you, and there's a lot I need to learn. I was just looking, boy. It's a fair old place here. Well, it's a piece of history, isn't it? Built in 1796, and uh, a working cotton mill to this very day. Ah, oh, heck. What can I do you for, then? Well, I need to make a sheet. Make a sheet? For my bed to go on my narrowboats. So you want to spin some yarn? and you want to weave it into some fabric. You see, this is what I need to learn. Are right. we talking about getting it from the sheep's back? Can I just say, cotton does not come from sheep. It comes from plants. Is that right? <laughs> Did you say you had a lot to learn? I have, obviously. After that bombshell, the first... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, guy, guy, guy. It's... I understood, the, like... Wool, still fluffy white stuff. Just one is plant based, one is is animal based. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta get the cotton off the sheep. One hundred percent, do that. Go go into the farmland and ask. Get the cotton off the sheep. Try it. Yeah, yeah, and try and get milk from that uh, bull, bull too. Bull's milk. <laughs> Oh. oh, we're having fun over here, I oh, promise. Man. Oh. First thing Guy has to do is make the thread that his sheet will be woven from on an 18th century spinning machine. Spinning is the process of taking the prepared cotton fibre. You can see it on the bobbins at the back there. Right. But you can see it's still fairly thick. Yes. But actually there's very little strength in no it. No strength there, is it? And what the machine has been doing is putting the twist into the cotton fibres and that gives it strength. In fact, if we untwist the yarn, then you can see that the strength just disappears. Oh, why? But if we twist it back up together again, it will join on as if there was never a break in it. Oh, yeah. Let's start the motor. That's sure the first thing we need to People have been lost in there by the looks of all that going. Ah, ah. So take off the safety catch, gently push the lever forward. Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the lever that puts the machine on. What do you reckon? Let it come back slowly. And away we go. As the spinning machine draws the yarn out, the spindles rotate at 10,000 revs per minute, putting the strengthening twist into the thread. The problem is the threads frequently break, and you have to find the broken end on the spindle and reattach it. So what are you doing there, then? I just put the string back on the spindle. Howard's years of experience are coming in handy, but for Guy, it's a right faff. No, it looks hard, and it is hard. 
when we repair yarn like that, it's called piecing. Yes. And piecers are the most junior people in the mill. And they would start at the age of, say, nine or ten. Yes. You're making some progress here. <laughs> Another 20 years, I think you'll be quite an expert. <laughs> in the 20. end, Guy has to stop the machine to catch the broken end of his thread, something that wouldn't have been dreamed of in Arkwright's day. They would never stop the machine. You don't stop the machine. You stop the machine, <laughs> your money is stopped. That's it. Yeah. Back onto the spindle. Well, I say it's not as easy, but I never thought it was going to be easy. Hey, you should wash your hands. I know, hands. I know, I'm sorry. This blanket of yours is going to be quite dirty. You know? I know. At this rate, making a sheet for the bed in Reckless is going to take some time. Do you reckon that's enough? You'll do for me, Bob. I'll oh, best get cracking. Neil takes Guy through the next stage weaving the thread into a length of material. The thread is put into a flying shuttle, which then has to be carefully loaded into the machine. So push it through, that's called the shed. It's through the shed. Once it's in place, the shuttle's knocked from left to right between the orange threads, which run from front to back, building up a piece of cloth. Okay, let go. The shuttle travels at 60 miles an hour. Well, get your hand in the way, then. Oh, no, you won't. don't want that. It really rattles on. This process makes about 10 feet of cloth every hour. It's a fantastic machine. You know, all the way everything's geared and throwing backwards and forwards now. I mean, well, we've still got leather straps on there. Oh, yeah. You know, not that they're pigskin. Yeah. The hammerheads are, the, are made out of pigskin. I just think that's fantastic. In 1770, the year before Arkwright opened his first factory, the cotton industry was worth around £600,000. A hundred years later, as a direct result of Arkwright's innovations, it was worth £40 million. Wow. Spot on, sir. Try and make a better job of this one. That's it. You reckon? There you are. I'm getting the hang, you see. <laughs> Another week or two on that job. Pleasure to do business with you. Good job, sir. Thank you very much. Add that to the list of things we took for granted, ne never knew how they came together. Now we know how a sheet could come together for your bed. I, I, that's insane. <laughs> like, the fact that people can just be like, oh, let's just make a machine for it. You know how difficult... I, 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 People's minds then, man, just different level. Yeah. Different level of innovation, man. Yeah. They needed it. There was, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Yep. So. Man. Yeah. I wonder how many jobs that took away. Probably thousands. Thousands. Maybe. Probably took away a lot of child labor, hopefully. I well, don't know, not, not the, no, the, the, the piecers, right? The guys that yeah. pieced it, they were all kids. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll take that back. Guy might have worked the night shift, but there's no time to put his feet up. He meets back up with Maeve on Reckless, who's still working on the bed frame. I've been a busy boy last night, boy. Hey, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bed sheets, med. <sighs> but you don't do a certain length, so I've got, I've got to sort it together. Let me feel the fibres of your fabric. I'm impressed. Let's get them spread out, Chief, and we'll get them stuck. We'll go on, we'll get them stitched together. I thought that cotton came from a, from a sheep. I know, mate. You do need a thrashing for that one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the sheets still need sewing together, and it looks like it might take some time. Oh, through what? No, 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 no. A bit of graft on here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but well, I won't call it real. I'll not hold my breath. The first stage of fitting out a bedroom for Reckless is complete. Now the boys need something to put their sheet on, a mattress. And for that, Guy's off to Hypnos, a fifth-generation mattress maker, who count the queen amongst their clients. Oh, wow. 33. Stan Jones has worked here for 40 years and starts by showing Guy how mattress fillings have developed over time. Yeah. It would have initially been made of straw with a hessian cover on 15th it. 15th century. Yeah. 
The top layer went to feather and down as well as the straw. Right. And then oh, we yeah. would have put a velvet, they would have put a velvet cover of some form on it yeah. for the posher person. Yeah, that's not for me. I'm not the no, posher no. person, really, Stan. Posh or not, the straw attracted mice into the mattress. So alternative materials soon became popular. So then, what, we go, what we got there? then we go to horse tail. Yeah, horse tail. Yeah, they used a horse, horse tail. tail. Because it's, it's longer strands, it holds together better, it's more resilient. Yeah. They also went to lamb's wools. Oh, lamb's wool. So this is I've lamb's wool. I've learned a bit wool. about lamb's wool. I always thought it was cotton that came off lambs for some reason, and I didn't go down very well. No, that's the cotton plant. I know, I know. I, yeah. I, I learned that the other day. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> go down very well. So here we've got the, the next stage, the 18th century. 18th century, yeah. Where we've got an open spring in it now. Right. A little bit of industry had crept into the bedroom. Hand-rolled bed springs revolutionised sleeping overnight, providing a flat, firm, shock-absorbing structure to snooze on. Guy will use their direct descendants for his mattress on Reckless, the pocket spring. What, what a pocket spring is, well, hey, they were invented by an Englishman. Um, Another invention being Englishman. Yeah, it was an Englishman, but unfortunately he moved to Canada. Englishman James Marshall may have received a Canadian patent, but there's no denying his pocket sprung mattress was a brilliant idea. Oh, heck. So you can feel it's gone up into the small of your back here. The springs moved independently, supporting you where needed and not disturbing you if your other half rolled over in the night. Are you all right, Sam? Next, Guy needs to stuff his mattress with his own bespoke blend of traditional materials. Oh, wow. This is horse hair. I horse won't put it on top. What, the tail? Yeah, the tail part of it. Right. With a backing on it, it will stop all of your fillings going through. Right. We'll have a bit of that, then. Yeah. This time-honoured technique uses a luxurious mohair stuffing. Uh, and would the, um, would the Queen have a mohair mattress as well? She... I think, if I remember rightly, she had... Just cow tail in there. Cow tail? Oh. It was all just hair. It's not okay. smelling the best, though, really. No, no, but it, trust me, you will not smell it through your bed. Yeah, like me on a wet day. And what, it's all for feel, so the difference between... It's all to do with feels. You ever use hamster hair out like that? No, I don't think so. You'd, You'd have to a shave a few hamsters, You would, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? You'd shave a lot of hamsters. <laughs> 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 this, dude, did this guy just say shave a bunch of hamsters? Good old hamster hair. <laughs> that would take a lot of shaving. You might have better luck shaving guinea pigs. Yes, you would. <laughs> they, they, they hold their secrets close to them, so you never know. <laughs> it's a couple of insulating layers and then the top cover. And on the label, it should oh, be telling you what's inside. It's your Look bed, it's your bed. <laughs> I'm impressed with that, the boss. With no, yeah. personalised yeah. cover sewn on, the mattress must be squashed flat so that it can be tufted, sewn together to keep all the stuffing in the right place. Push it like you mean it. The next stage of Reckless's bedroom is complete. A natural tufted mattress. But will all that graft result in a good night's sleep? Oh, chief. <sighs> Look at that. <sighs> yes. Yes. Back at the boat, Maeve's Again, add that to the list. Mattresses. <laughs> Mattresses, man. What? Dude, I... Guy is accruing, like, all the prized possessions. Yeah. Like, like slowly. He has, he has period pieces that are dedicated to him. That's the mattress Guy built. There's only one of those. Yeah, yeah. And he has it. Oh, come on, dude. He has his own museum, probably. If that is true, please comment it down below, because I, I don't care where my itinerary is. I will make a special trek out for that. Yeah. I mean, he could he could fill up a little museum with all the cool little shit he's built along these journeys. Mm. Goodness gracious. Bed frame is taking shape and almost ready to accept Guy's horsetail and mohair mattress. Oh, Chief, some of the, the word that goes into this, you would not believe, Chief. Hey, oh. That's Chief, personalised to me. It's about the Guy Bill. Oh, Check her out, Guy. Hey. You're not worthy to lay on this. Chief. <laughs> Honestly, I just thought a mattress was a mattress, boy. You get laid on this. Oh, Chief. You can see me having 40 winks fairly sharp. I think, yeah. Go on, swing yeah. the end round. Go on. This ain't going in here. Go, Go on, on. Chief. 
Hang on, hang on. No. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the cookie. Watch the cookie. With the mattress on. Man, that's something I didn't think about was getting it into the boat. How narrow the entrance was. Like. Yep. 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 And they're not getting their parts from IKEA. So no. there's no disassembling it, putting it in, and then reassembling it. That, that is a handcrafted piece. Dude, I'm telling you, man, no one thinks about where the mattress goes after, when they buy the mattress. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I am. I we have a uh, California king in the house in the master in the master bedroom. Yeah, and that thing, I, I, I told Holly, I was like, this is a one way trip for this mattress. This is, we're cutting it up to get out of the house. Oh my god! Like, there's no relocating this bed. Oh my god! Because it's I, just massive. I think I might have remembered helping you transfer that thing, and I remember that story. Ugh. That's just it was. I'm like, dude, this is this is real. <laughs> like it's yeah. just like, oh my god, f that. Shit. On board, just there's only one thing left to make for the bedroom an alarm clock. An alarm. Anything has to be better than Guy's current method for waking up. You ever heard this? If you want to be up at six o'clock, tap your head, your, your fingers on your head six times. Right. And you'll get up at six o'clock. Is that right? I've tried it twice and it works. Right. But then I've tried it and it did, it did let me down once. So we're going to need someone who's a bit more reliable than a tap on the head. Clocks play. Bullshit. No way. I won't do that tonight. Yeah. Tap on your head six times, you'll wake up at six o'clock. We're going to see. I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> played an illustrious part in the Industrial Revolution, and nearby Derby has a proud history of clockmaking. Local lad John Smith made his fortune as one of the most famous clockmakers of the 19th century. Look at that, Smith of Derby. The boys are visiting the biggest Smith's clock they can find at Derby Cathedral, to research what they'll need to make an alarm clock for Reckless. All right, Tony. Uh, welcome. How's it going, sir? Uh, very well. Welcome Hi, to you both. Let's go up the tower. Good man. Lovely place you've got here, boy. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. The inner workings of the clock are halfway up the 120-foot tower. Oh, my God. Right. All right welcome. Tom. First floor. And oh, this yeah. is the clock, the clock room. Oh, hi. There's not a lot to it, is there? Well, is it? You think that great big thing outside with yes. the time on it? You think it needs a bit of a bigger working? Yes, it's a bit small. No matter what the scale, a mechanical clock is a very delicate, precision-engineered piece of machinery. It keeps time using a swinging pendulum powered here by a suspended weight, which drops slowly as it drives the mechanism. To keep the clock going, the weight has to be regularly cranked back up to its starting point. And a fella will come every week to wind the weight back up again, and that'll just keep... Oh, where you go? That's near mesmerising. I could, you could sit and oh, watch that all yeah. Fantastic. You could have the weight of the world on your shoulders, couldn't you? You could just sit and come and watch that. Oh, that could be worse. Guy decides to take his clock research to the extreme. Right, Chief. Maria. Oh, wow. At the top. Well, you couldn't have picked a better day for it, could you? A bit misty, Asked by the rope access team to help with the cleaning of the clock. All right, Steve. Hi, guys. How's it going, Val? Good, good. Nice good to see you. See you. He gets to experience what was the most dangerous job of the Victorian oh, era. Oh, my God. I'm looking forward to this. I've never done any of this before. Oh, oh my God. Over. Yeah. During the Industrial Revolution, the rise of the coal-powered steam engine meant tall chimneys sprang up everywhere and steeplejacks were in big demand. Yeah, and this is where Guy Martin and Fred Divna finally crossed paths. There we go. <laughs> there we go. They had to have known about each other, right? If had, had to have. Had to have. Yeah, it's impossible if, it, if they didn't. Or at least Guy definitely knew about Divna. Had yeah. to have. Right, yeah. yeah. There was no training, and the phrase health and safety hadn't even been thought of. No carabiners, no, no safety lines. No, down on the plane, yeah. Oh, well. Am I all right? Just to guide me, send down, push me, send off the wall. Yes, 
No arms. No arms. Good lad. <laughs> Steeplejacks would have to climb up enormous ladders without any form of safety rope or lower themselves on a bosun's chair like guys, but without the harness. Lovely seat you got there, haven't you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Best seat in the house. Yeah. Where is it? I can't see it for them gargoyles. Yeah. Mega. Further down. It's good fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Mega. Yeah. Smiths of Derby still make mechanical tower clocks to this day, and they've recently delivered the biggest clock in the world to a tower in China. But as impressive as all this is, guys hit on a problem which would stop the clock working on Reckless. The pendulum rig that's inside this, fantastic that it is, is no good for being on a boat. You know, because the way a boat... Rocks. Even, even a narrow boat, I mean, there's not, I mean, it's not tidal route and there's no waves in a canal. But still, oh, it course, rocks with yeah. a bit of wind and yeah, all that, yeah. and that knocks the pendulum out of kilter, oh, you see. Right. So I've got to get a, a way around. All right, we want this device, we want the same sort of mechanism, but we need it powered off a different device. We don't need it powered off a pendulum. We need it powered off, I don't know, and this is what I'm going to find out. Guy decides to seek advice from a clockmaker. If he wants a mechanical alarm clock on Reckless, it'll have to use something other than a pendulum to keep it ticking. So, in all honesty, did Guy have to play Fred Dipna for a little bit to find that out? No. 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 But it's great viewing, though. Yeah, it's great TV. I'm just, I'm just saying, man. Could have figured I, that out. I would out. never, in, in, in case, and like, unless I absolutely had to, I still wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Screw that. Yeah. <laughs> He's come to see local clockmaker Rob James, who's been in the family trade since he was a young lad. Rob's found a very fitting timepiece to use for Guy's clock. Now, this is out of a mill or a factory or somewhere similar. Yeah. And the bottom dial here, you can put pins in, mm -hmm. and they'll flick the switch and it'll sound the hooter. So it'll be All right. first thing in the morning to get him into work. Tea breaks. Tea breaks, lunch, end of lunch. But, oh, et cetera, et cetera. but the problem with this is, it's a pendulum clock. Which is not good for no my narrow boat. Rob and Guy will have to adapt the clock so it works on Reckless, using a solution to one of the biggest nautical problems of all time. Where do you want me? Can I do it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Graph, I'm not sure. In the early 18th century, with no accurate clock available to work on a boat, accurate navigation at sea was a real challenge. So many ships and sailors were lost that the government offered a prize of £20,000 to anyone who could find a solution. £20,000? I reckon I'd nearly chop my granny in for £20,000. Yeah. It was self-taught Lincolnshire clockmaker John Harrison who solved the problem. He refined one of his clocks by swapping the pendulum for a balance wheel, something that would be unaffected by the movement of a boat. Wow. So rather than the pendulum swinging to and fro, yes. this is doing exactly the same thing, but on a constant arc, a constant circle. Right. This that, stellar that, that we're looking at here? Yeah, that's the balance wheel. Harrison went to great lengths to prove to the Admiralty that his idea would work. He walked from Barrow upon Umber down to London to go and present this. He walked, proper walked. Now, what's all that about? That's commitment, that, isn't it? And even when he achieved it, they didn't believe he'd done it. They kept sending his, his, his machines off on boats, coming back again and thinking, well, yeah, it's pretty good, but could it just be luck? You know, can he really do this? Yeah. Until such a point where they had to pay him, because it was £20,000. Oh, heck. Heaps of money. And these oh. kilometres were half the price of the boat. Uh, wow. So we're buy. talking millions. Like, well, put it in today, today. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Fortunately, it's not such an expensive job these days. Guy just needs to make a new cog in order to fit a balance wheel like Harrison's to his old mill clock. Right. A few final touches and Guy's cog is finished. Once it's in the mill clock, the balance wheel can be attached instead of the pendulum. So we'll just gently get that into something like position. Can we turn it back on? Yeah, we won't just tighten it up just yet and then... Yeah? Look at that. Look at that. Thanks to the balance wheel, the clock's ticking over nicely again. But Guy still needs an alarm, and he's got an idea. The cotton mill I was in had a great big bell 
to get them to work in the morning. And I need someone's, maybe not that, because you could hear it from four miles away. Mm. I don't really think I need someone's that big to get me out of bed in the morning. So if I get you a bell, I'm sure I can dig one out from somewhere. You could rig us up so much to eat it. Of course we can. To get me out of bed can. in the morning. Absolutely, yeah. Guy leaves Rob to work on an alarm mechanism and heads back to Maeve to see his completed bedroom. Hi, oh, yeah, Chief. How about... Thought I'd turn your bedroom into a bit of a workshop, if you don't mind. Chief. 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 That is a boudoir, is it? It's a boudoir. For Monsieur Martin. I didn't know you had it in you. Look at that. You made that yourself? Made the door? Yeah. And Maeve's got wow. another surprise for Guy. He's found oh a God. bell for the alarm clock. You're going to be very proud of Mavis Davis, I'll tell you this. Go on. Come and have a look at this, boy. Okay, Just come and have a look at this. I could even say I'm mildly excited. Why heck? Just check this bad boy out. Why heck, Chief? That's going to get me out of bed in the morning. That is going to get you out of bed. <laughs> that is going to wake him up <laughs> in Mongolia, Chief. Gee. I reckon, Chief. Go on. I'm thinking something like that in like a, um, a big frame. Like a carriage that bells do hang in. You know, like oh, what you, what do, you do? do you have it swinging in every direction or swinging front to back, know. side to side? I don't know really, I just thought I'd maybe. Is hang it going to be a bit of trial and error? Chain. Yeah. I like a bit of trial and error. Yeah, there. exactly. All right. All I know is this is heavy. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, it seems a little big, don't you think? Yeah, well, hey, sometimes when you have a big day, you got to have a big alarm. Yep, yep. I'll give you that. <laughs> But to say, it probably wouldn't fit into one of those tiny uh, clocks, though. Uh, definitely not. No. But, uh, I mean, but who knows? Who knows? I, I will never count uh, Guy Martin out of anything. He, mm. If there's anyone that can make it work, he can. Yeah, 100%. While Maeve knocks up his sturdy frame for the bell, Guy navigates up the canal for the final part of the mission to meet with Rob the clockmaker and fit the alarm clock to Reckless. Rob Maeve, Maeve Rob. Right, right. Right. What do you reckon? It's fair thing, isn't it? To sound the alarm, uh... Rob's made an automatic bell clapper out of a windscreen wiper motor, triggered by the clock. That'll not be coming off in any morning. The clock is fitted, and Guy sets the pins for six o'clock, just a few minutes away. Right. I reckon we're not far off at that. If he's got it right, it should go off any moment now. Anticipation, see what you reckon. They're very excited. We've nearly run out of daylight, haven't we? Uh -huh. So you better have it than the donger there. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what a bad timing, that one. What think to that? Eh? Well, it's not going to wet the dead, is it? No, it's going to no. wet you, don't it? It'll wet me, but I don't think it's going to wet the neighbour. No, it's six o'clock in the morning, mate. Oh. It'll scare oh, the living daylights out of you. You'll think a ghost ship's coming past. <laughs> It'll get me out of bed. It's the biggest bell on an alarm clock I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Well, that'll do. That'll do for me. It's a beauty. Oh, man. Thank you, Rob, That's and awesome. thank you, John Harrison. Yeah, and I love That's you, great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks, yeah. Thanks a million, Bob. With Harrison's clock, Arkwright's cotton sheets, Maeve's bed frame, and a mattress fit for the Queen, a good night's sleep is finally within reach. We're getting mucky. What's your feet? Oh, Show some respect. I can't believe Show I'm getting a lecture respect. about being mucky off you. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> That's me stitching. I think I need, need to go back to home economics. Home economics. Come think, on. Yeah, I think we'd both benefit from a trip back to school, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Bed making's not our strong point, is it? I don't know. I think it's uh, in the breeding, boy. Right. Oh, so it's right. not bad, is it, really? All right, I'll get you something. Go on. This mattress has already got a grip of me and I don't think I want to get off it. <laughs> it's absolutely fabulous. This will have to do for, for the time being. Oh. Right, Maeve, are you coming for the duration? Oh. Oh. Hey? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, I like your bed, and I know you've been making everything, but you don't, wa you don't wash. You're not particularly handsome. <laughs> no, I can't like, go home. What? That is a lovely bed. Right. Have a good night, Chief. Thank you very much. And I'll have a snooze. Oh, See a good mattress, though. A good mattress. Personalised mattress. <sighs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it all came together right there. Hell yeah. Oh my god, I love I I there's something special about Guy and and his projects, man. They just it's just so normal. Like I don't mean that in any kind of negative connotation it's just refreshing to see something normal this is just 
good innocent viewing and it sparks that create creativity and also you learn a lot too it's yeah. like the antiques roadshow of carpentry building yeah antiques roadshow that's what this is <laughs> it's so cool man i don't know now fight me i don't think there's anything more wholesome than this man. this is why we do it on sundays is most people are probably hung over and they yeah. don't need something high energy right now they need no. something wholesome to kind of nurse, nurse, nurse that hangover yeah. a bit yeah. when even if he was induced by alcohol or not as we discussed earlier you know this is great it's always a good time watching guy do guy shit. exactly all right y'all three more of these left hope you'll tune in and watch the rest of them with us yeah. consider subscribing and watching another video in the meantime what else dan Unplug and do something legendary, guys. We'll see you next time. Later.